Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Before we get started with the show, I have a question for you. Are you a busy solopreneur struggling to find the time to consistently post to your social accounts? Well, the Scrivener Solutions team and I are introducing Scrivener Social, the easy-to-use social media scheduling platform paired with all of our workflows. It simplifies the entire posting process, saving you time and boosting your social media marketing efforts. Here's how it works. First, you subscribe to Scrivener Social, choosing the support level that best fits your needs. Second, we have onboarding calls to help you set up your account and give you the guidance for streamlining your posting process. Third, you implement your plan using our workflows to get more out of your social media marketing. Now, you could continue to do it alone being frustrated and feeling guilty that you never get around to posting to your social accounts for your small business. Or you could save time, energy, and frustration by using an easy-to-use social scheduling platform backed by a support team that helps you streamline the whole process. You deserve a system that makes posting to your social media faster and more efficient. Go to ScrivenerSocial.com and subscribe today. Now, on to the show. This marks the last of our series where Fran and I discuss the four key elements that all marketing plans should incorporate. Website, consistent core content or an authority piece, social media, and email. Each of these components has a unique role and works in harmony to amplify your message. In this series, Fran and I are covering each component separately. Today, our focus is the importance of consistent communication to inform and nurture your contacts through email. Hi there and welcome. This is the show where we explore topics that help you create your lifestyle to live full and work fun. I'm Gayla Scrivener, joined by my co-host, Fran Grosbeck. Hey, Gayla, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, we have been talking marketing because, you know, creating a business really isn't for everyone, but most of our listeners want to create a work scenario that fits the lifestyle that they want to create. And for me, there came a time that I wanted to leave the traditional corporate job scene and create earning a living where I wasn't bound by geography. How I wanted to earn a living was to create a business where I could work from anywhere. How about you, Fran? I've wanted to create my own business since I was a little girl. And I I remembered this five years ago when I started doing my own business. I had a little plastic cash register. And for those of you who ever come into my office or see me on Zoom, you'll see it behind me. And I have memories of starting businesses from restaurants to retail stores, to even owning a bank, which I guess as a little girl, I thought was possible. (laughs) And similar to you, Gayla, the corporate world opened my eyes to some things, both sides. I have been very lucky to work for amazing people, two presidents in particular, who the way they led their company and treated their people left a mark on me, the way they cared, the way they treated us, just goes on and on. They were just wonderful. And even the people I worked with, bosses I've had that were just amazing leaders, both of professionalism, but also compassion. And then I've unfortunately also had the other side of the coin where um, I've seen people treated more as numbers or numbers on a spreadsheet, being lumped in with the masses or getting reviewed based on some generic rating system. Both sides of the coin have been motivation for me in building my business. I see, though, that same motivations can help you develop your way, whether you have your own business or work in an office. It's about how you want to live 
And then from there, it's about connection and helping people. Absolutely. With growing a business, all businesses must market. And that happens to be what we do. And we are in the midst of this series all about the essentials of marketing your small business. And the big four that we've been talking about that we believe are essential, whether you're starting out uh, or you've been in a business a long time, we've been talking about uh, the four. I don't know, do we call them? I think you've mentioned pillars or, or, you know, we, we aren't stuck on that, but we have website, an expertise piece, that core piece of content, like a blog, podcast, or video, social media. And the fourth thing is email. And today we are going to do a deep dive in email and let's blow out. I, this is what I hear and I don't know about you, but this is what I hear the the top two misconceptions about email marketing or email communication is first it's dead and second oh, i don't want to email too much i'm going to bother my followers i totally agree and in thinking about email in relation to the four pieces in my mind i started to see a puzzle because in a puzzle if a piece is left out you see the missing gap right to think email is dead is wrong. It's it's a golden opportunity to create connection for two reasons. The biggest one for me, and it's a gap I see with a lot of the businesses I work with, email is your way to connect with existing and past customers. Oftentimes, the focus of someone when they come to us, if they're struggling or there's a problem, they ask about how do I get more followers? How do I get new business? When I ask them, well, what are you doing to engage your current customers? I often get, well, they know we're here. No, they don't. Their lives are so full of their own to-do lists, family, personal problems. They don't keep everybody at the forefront. And when that next problem pops up or they're in need of something, they need a product or a service. If you're not in front of them, the person who is talking to them will be the one they go to. So email is this golden opportunity to stay connected with your existing customer. And I think for a lot of people that don't want to bother them, it's a question of doing it right. I want to do, I don't like to focus on the negative, but I will give you this one. The one thing I would advise people not to do, which I see a lot of businesses doing now, because I am at the tail end of receiving them, is grabbing somebody's email off LinkedIn and blasting them. If it was not solicited, that is where you're going to bother them. But if this is someone you've been connected to, you've talked to before, they've communicated with you, you did work with them, talk to them, communicate with them, let them know you're still there and what you're up to. Well, if this email marketing goes in line with permission marketing. And there are a lot of tools out there. Some of the big ones uh, could be MailChimp, um, the constant contact or the are two big ones, but there's also a lot of other email services that you can send out an email to several people to your list. So let's first talk about an email list. How do you gather names for an email list? You mentioned don't pull it from LinkedIn. But you could message somebody, you could be communicating with them and uh, get their permission to say, hey, I've got a newsletter, may I put you on that list? There are ways that you can individually ask folks. Absolutely. The, if it's an existing business, they most likely have a fantastic email list already in existence in their current database of existing clients and existing customers. Right there is a great start. Hey, we're kicking off this newsletter. Feel free to opt out, but here's what we're going to talk about on a monthly basis or whatever your frequency is. Another database is your local chamber of commerce, or in my case here where I live, it's an alliance, a business alliance, and approach them about communicating with their members. If that's your target audience, there's ways to reach out to people. The other thing when it comes to the list that I think is a misconception is it has to be thousands of names long or hundreds of names long. It could be 10 to start. 
with email, it's about quality, not quantity. You want to make sure you're reaching the right people that want to hear from you and that are the right people to talk to. Quantity can become important as you grow, but don't worry about that to start. And another way is to put something on your website, and this is how those four pieces of the puzzles come together, to invite them to join your email list. Hey, send us your email. Here's a free piece of e-content to get you started. And then monthly, I'll keep you updated. Those, those two big things with the list is don't worry about quantity when you're starting out. Worry about quality and inviting those people to want to hear from you. And then the other side of it is there are ways to build that list with those quality contacts. You don't always have to have digital means to collect email names. Uh, trade fairs are back in vogue now, <laughs> and they're, you know, and uh, going out to like your alliance, my local networking groups, and we're talking with people, and then you follow up and say, "Hey, it was great to see you. They're a person on your list that you can reach out and just say, "Hey." We had a great conversation. I send out a, a monthly uh, publication, giving out hints, tips, whatever that publication is. And I'm going to put you on the list. And if you want to unsubscribe, it doesn't pertain to you anymore. Go ahead and uns unsubscribe. But it's very, very important that you know that you can start that conversation organically. Absolutely. And and I loved how you touched on don't let the, the size of your email list deter you from starting your email cadence, your email routine. And we work on, on a client together, our, our biggest clients that, to, that we work, collaborate together in the communication process. And that particular client wasn't emailing at first. And what's important with this client, you touched on a very important point. It's the your current customers, and then you have strangers, not, you know, those are your prospects. And this particular shared client that we collaborate with, they, it's a membership type site, and they weren't communicating with their members. They weren't communicating. Very um often very often at all. And when we came in and together on this, one of the other challenges was that there was very little engagement in the member-specific portal side on their website. And if you look at the four key pieces of the marketing puzzle we're talking about, each one was missing in a way or not fully activated. And it was in connecting those pieces that made a difference. And email, and this ties into one of the topics I know we'll be talking about, email and the e-news part of this became so critical to the members because we had so much to, to, to make sure they knew about. And it's, it's in associations. This is something you need to, on a regular basis, let them know what you're doing for them, what they're getting for their dues. And we broke it up into four e-news for a month, they have the right to unsubscribe. We get very few unsubscribes because each email applies to a different group, yet each group wants to know what the other group is up to and wants to know what we're up to in general. And through that, we saw an uptick in our website stats. Our second biggest ranking page is our member portal now. We saw an uptick in our engagement with prospects because we created a special, and th this leads to another part. You don't have to just have one newsletter. We have the newsletters for our members, and then we have newsletters for prospects. They're different audiences, different, different frequencies, because for the prospects, we don't want to upset them. We're not going to email them weekly. We don't want to be too in their face. And we know the balance of how to be with how to be in front of them. And that's a big part of email is stopping and thinking, okay, who is my audience? What are they dealing with on a daily basis? Am I a primary opportunity for them or am I in the background? Is this a product they need every day? Or is this something that they'll need when a problem comes up? And based on that can be how you interact with them. So that can add to frequency. But our 
frequency. We have different frequency for the members and the prospects. Both of those have fed to the success of the other three marketing pieces. I'm super proud of that. And when looking at that, we've been working at that now. Is this our third year? Third year, yes. And quite frankly, at first it was, you know, it it took us, well, the first year we we in started increasing our frequency, but we did not have that formula dialed in until, what, a year, year and a half in. I think we've been dialed in for at least a, a year, year and a half with with our templates. And the members know what to expect and when, and it's easier for us to produce that content and give them the news that they need, which took time of trial and error and really dialing in on the information that they needed to know. And then the prospects, you're getting more uh, feedback and getting more traction on increasing membership because we're talking to those prospects. And it's it's a long tail marketing stream before they actually purchase sometimes. Sometimes they need to hear from us similar messages over and over again. And when you're in your own business, you think that you're saying the same thing and everybody knows what you do, but you don't. (laughs) I mean, just like you said, people need to be reminded or you hone in on your messaging or you give value and helping folks that they could do it on their own. And when they need your help, then they know where to come. Most of uh, my my other clients are uh, not associate, you know, not a membership type thing, but they are consultants. And we start them out. They they might be sporadically emailing, but I start them and insist on them of having a minimum of a once a month. Oh, get started with a once a month newsletter type, but you can design the newsletter so many different ways. And I have a a download that I'll put in the show notes, but a super simple way. And I did this for a massage therapist several years ago and and suggested it for uh, other folks. A lot of folks don't know what to say. And then they're afraid of saying, uh, contacting their folks too often. Well, let's take, for example, this uh, massage therapist. I suggested a once a month email. They had a website, but they weren't really active on it and they wanted to make some changes and things like that. I was like, you know what? Just break down the year into 12 topics. You, you, You can inform your folks. You're a massage therapist. There are 12 things that you can you know, frequently asked questions or or whatever, and write a little article about that. Just saying, hey, you know, some people have a pain in the neck. Well, have you ever considered tech tech neck and talk about tech neck and and about our our devices that that gives us the pain in the neck? And you can do it clever, you know, or do it straightforward. But you're helping those folks. And the beauty of that is that you're connecting with those folks that you have their email address, you're helping them, you're keeping top of mind. And you know what the beauty of it is to fill in some of those other puzzles that can be reworked just ever so slightly and be your blog post. You have a once a month blog post already written. And then from there, you could do social posts from the same topic. And so you have a month's worth of content immediately. And that's that's one of the the simple out strip down content plan that one can do. But I suggest, I don't know about you, but I suggest that the frequency should be no less than once a month. I agree. And I really like what you were just talking about, which is making a realistic plan. Frequency ties into that, right? Making it once a month, having a template, having something simple to start is powerful. Going back to our example, we didn't, the e-news, if we look at them three years ago, do not look like what they look like today. And in the idea of frequency and basic plan, 
don't give up on something just because it doesn't result in what you expected in the first couple of months. We would go back, we'd look at them, we'd rework them. Hey, what if we do this? What if we add a header here? What if we add a footer here? What if we put in a link that they can book a call for this? We kept working and evolving and we didn't blame the tool. We didn't blame ourselves either. We just said, how can we keep making this better? How can we improve our communication and the tool we're doing? And that is a big part of email. I say to people that marketing is a combination of patience, persistence, and momentum. Patience is a big thing with email because you have to find the right way to say something. Like you said, it could be fun. You'd be curious. If you're, be who you are though. If you're a straightforward person, be straightforward in the email. Be who they know, who they're going to meet when they pick up that phone and call you or schedule an appointment or buy your product. If you're a fun, outgoing, you know, crazy person, be fun in it. You know, like how do you get rid of that pain in your neck? (laughs) Which can mean a lot of things. Just start. Pick a plan. Pick a message. This is a big, important place to not worry about perfection is your marketing. Just start. And email is a perfect one. Like you said, sit down, pick 12 topics in your business that's important to you. There you go. You already have the outline for your 12 newsletters. Which then, like you said, now turn into 12 blogs. Boom, done. And just set aside 15 minutes to write each one. Blogs should only be about 600 to 800 words. They don't have to be novels. So think about that for your newsletter. Maybe your newsletter is just a blurb that leads to the blog, which gets them on your website. And now they've read the full blog. They're excited. They're now on the right space to go click and book an appointment or buy the product. So just keep it simple. And... Anytime you come up with an excuse in your head or you feel that voice going, oh, I can't do this, or I tried this before and it didn't work, push those thoughts to the side and figure out how can I do this? How can I try this again? I think it's also important to recognize that over time and just doing it, you are going to find your system and it's going to get easier. The way it's not being selfish by any means, to find a template or create a templates, create things that make your life easier, to make your life more efficient. And whether you have a team or you're doing it yourself, I think that you need to figure that out. And the email process, when we first started ramping that up for our shared client, it was it was kind of messy at first and it was kind of stressful now it's it's not and we we keep changing things but we keep it in the perspective of how can we make it the the information valuable for the receiver and easy for us to produce it and i'm big on templates and things like that. And I just gave one example of how you can do almost like a blog, a blog piece, you know, you're writing, you're pouring your heart out to your, your reader. And I think that sometimes I position uh, my client uh, or advise my client that if never emailed or doesn't blog, that they start with the email because it's easier to imagine that one person that you're emailing and write to that one person, and then send that to the whole list. And it's just easier to framework or trick your mind that you're speaking to one, and then you can send it uh, to all. And it would be relevant to many on your list. Many of our clients, that many of the clients that I work with, we do an e-newsletter. They have services, they have courses, they have events that they run. And so it's easy to have a format of a little blurb, little, little, hey, hope you're doing well. Here's what's going on. And then you have blocks that you always fill, your number one service that you're trying to promote this time. What events are you uh, going to? What courses, if you're a course creator? And you might have 10 or 15 courses But what's that one that you want to feature during that period of time? So there's a lot. And my goodness, Fran, you work, I work with service-based folks primarily. You work with products. Now, is it different if you 
Do you still email people even if you are a product base? Oh, yes. With product and product is a perfect example for this one rule I want to give people. We all think our products are the best ones. We all think ours have solved the world's problems. And oftentimes we forget two things. We think everybody knows about us. Everybody knows we're out there. Everybody knows we're available. And two, we can go down a bad path of getting too technical, over explaining, or even worse, talking down to someone, assuming they don't understand the features and benefits and how our product works. Keep it simple. Keep it focused. I love what you just said about imagining the one person you're talking to who you know gets your product. Talk to that person. Tell them why it's going to help them. And that becomes your email. The other thing with product, if you're going to do product-based emails, it's important to also make sure they understand the whole brand and mix it up. Have both product and brand in your messaging, whether it be an email or otherwise. But if you're going to do product email, often we suggest two newsletters, one that really focus on a specific product and then one that talks more to the brand and how that product or other products fit in. Similar to your idea about 12 topics you want to talk about, what are the 12 product, or let me take a step back, what are the top products you want to talk about this year, whether new or future, and put them in that schedule and then create your content around that. If you want to talk about product A and product B, alternate. One month is A, one month is B. Or as you get closer to the launch of a product, build them up, get them excited for it, and make sure you don't try to over-explain in email. Email is a great place for people to just write long bits of content. Use those templates in places like MailChimp and Constant Contact. Remember that email should be a way to introduce an idea or concept and drive them to one of the other parts of the puzzle, which is either the blog or the website, and use it as a means of building connection without overwhelming anyone. But with product, it's critical to have a good email program because that is where connecting with past or existing customers to keep in front of them and make sure that when they are in need of a product like yours, they see and remember you first. I love that. And it seems, well, it seems like we are talking about one kind of email. We're talking about nurturing series where we're reaching out, we're get, we're providing value. Once in a while, we'll do a, a call to action, but we're giving, we're you know, we're informing, we're entertaining uh, for the most part. But email is very powerful in a sales series as well. And you hear the buzzwords of funnel and all of that stuff. And there is folks that have a lead magnet. We talked about putting something on your website to gather emails. And that is called a lead magnet. That could be a downloadable, that could be a free course, something of value to exchange your email that you can provide helpful information. And then you follow up and nurture that audience. But it's very beneficial to do a sales series, which there's a different cadence to that. There's a different uh a, a different philosophy, a different strategy. For example, the uh, the membership that you and I do for members, we have a seven email. It's it, it, I consider it a sales series. It's an onboarding series. We're teaching them how to navigate and utilize all of their member benefits. And it's not just one email. Okay, you're in. No, it's a series of seven over a period of like seven to 10 weeks. And that we tweak every so often, uh, every year, year and a half or, or so. But then we also have a series for prospects because we have something on the website that a prospective member would like. Well, once they download it, we need to follow up with them to kind of qualify them to become members. And we've got their attention immediately. So there are 
There's nurturing series that are super, super important. And then there's sales series that are super, super important. Definitely. In a sales series too, you can merge the two ideas. Often in marketing plans for the other marketing people out there, we'll talk things like 311, 411, 422, all these different strategies. And basically it's information, soft sell, hard sell. Um, Soft sell and hard sell Hard sell is what everybody knows. Hey, buy my product. It's $19.99. You'll love it. (laughs) Soft sell blends and information is the nurturing. That's the, hey, what do you do in the winter for your HVAC system? So you're bringing in the, showing them you're an expert and you're someone to turn to if they have that question. Soft sell, which probably could use a new name, is the blend of those two. Hey, have you checked your heater this winter? Click here. And sign up for our $99 uh, winter reboot, whatever it may be. So know, knowing your audience and knowing your product, knowing your service and where those fit. I am not a big believer that there's one marketing method that applies to everybody. Just know who and know who you are. Know who your audience is and know who you are and what works right for you. If you're not a hard sell kind of person, then do the blend. If you are a hard sell, go for it. Enjoy, have fun with it. There's nothing wrong with any one of them. But one of the things that will happen if you try to do what everyone else is doing or try to do something you read because it's a philosophy and it doesn't resonate with you, it will unfortunately come through in the messaging. And that's where disconnection happens. When someone, when the reader does not feel it's authentic or it feels forced or it feels like they've seen it before, it's and you the whole goal of everything we do in marketing is to build connection. So be be true to yourself, follow what works for you, and make sure that you use the path to also, like you said, not just give over the information and expertise, but lead them to what you want them to do with your service or product. Yeah. We do have to ask for the sale <laughs> once in a while. And sometimes that's kind of uncomfortable. But I think that we need to be willing to listen to the other formulas and find the right formula for us and for us individually. Or you work with a marketing uh, agency or a marketing company, a marketing consultant, try what, what they've tried because they have experience with it. And if you're frustrated with where you're at, you can't get to a new direction unless you try new things. So... It's but and and maybe uh, at first it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it does need to be authentic to you, and you'll f- you'll find your way. You'll find your way. So I don't know about you, but I've heard from different age groups, the younger age group, that say, "Oh, I don't even look at my email and this, that, and the other." I still think that in any business, email is important. All the communication channels are important because we receive the information in different ways, regardless of your age, of whether you're running a business or getting on an email list. I think that it's important to recognize that email is still a very personal way of receiving information and it's not dead and it should be very, very much a part of your marketing. I agree wholeheartedly. And regarding generational generalizations, I warn people to be careful of them. We come out with these stereotypes of generations, yet in every generation, there's going to be those that will read email and those that don't. There will be those that prefer social. There are those that will only see things on YouTube. There is, you know... There are some that still only read newspapers. It really is about knowing who your audience is. And again, going back to where you're comfortable communicating, but email, email, the proof that email is not dead is that it is one of the most critical components of one of the growing agencies of marketing, which is subscription programs. What's the primary tool those subscription programs use, which is email to stay connected. And people are selecting email Because that's where they prefer to read and they have the power to flag it, label it, file it over here, put it in a to-do list to read later or put action on it. Email has its place. And this get 
get really in tune with what you want to do, what you want to achieve and figure out where its place is in your marketing. I love that. Well, guys, I think we should continue this conversation over in Facebook. So hop over to the Live Full Work Fun Facebook group and tell us your thoughts on on email marketing. Are you doing it? Have you tried and it it was hard for you? Or do you have trouble with consistency or are you just knocking it out of the park? We'd love to hear your biggest takeaway from today's show. Well, thanks for listening. And until next time, have a fantastic week. Live full, work fun. This episode has been brought to you by Scrivener Social, the easy-to-use social scheduling platform built for the busy solopreneur. You deserve a system that makes posting to your social media faster and more efficient. Go to ScrivenerSocial.com and subscribe today.